I don't think there is one single definition of what it means to be a modern Muslim woman. I think there's probably about a billion. Every Muslim woman you meet who lives today is a modern Muslim woman. And there's lots of different ways of being that because I think there's lots of different ways of being a woman. I was never made to feel there were things I couldn't do as a girl or as a woman within my family. My mum was very much a feminist in the sort of 1970s version of being a feminist. So it was never explicitly said, you can't do this or you shouldn't do that. But it was more an awareness as the older I got that there were just these subtle social pressures. So while in theory, of course, a woman can do this and be this, but society doesn't like it when women are too outspoken or too opinionated or too driven. So yes, you can be what you want so long as you do it quietly and you don't get in our way. Um, and it was more that awareness has been something that as I've got older, I've pushed against uh, more. I converted to Islam when I was still a teenager, so I was 19 when I became Muslim. I started to get interested in Islam when I was about 17, um, and I decided to research it for myself. When I was 19, it was actually here at this university that I just had this moment of realising, oh gosh, I think this is actually true. And what does that mean? What does that mean for who I am? Whenever I'm needing to make a decision, big, small, doing the dishes at the end of the day or what I want to do for my career, I always ask myself, what will future Susan be glad you did? I am generally choosing things that long-term me is very happy about. So that, that's the trick for me. I think the way we think about ourselves, but also the way we think about others and um, maybe prejudge people without knowing them, absolutely can create barriers um, between us and them. And I think now more than ever, we all have a personal responsibility to try to overcome them and get to know each other as individuals and people because the more I travel and the more I study, the more I realise we are all very similar. We all want the same things. We all want to be happy. We all want our families to feel safe. That is uh, universal. That's humanity. And I think especially um, with COVID and the pandemic, we've realised what it is that makes us human. The, the, the things that make us human is coming together. We can't keep doing everything through a screen. I think we can prejudge people. We can prejudge ourselves as well. And that's something we all have to work against. I did a lot of research into uh, sexism and, and Islam. And what was interesting but not surprising to me was to find out that there have been Muslim women throughout history who have been fighting against sexism. And that shouldn't surprise us at all because when you think about it, of course, that there will always be women in every context, in every situation who see the situation that they are in and say, this isn't good enough and, and I want to do something to change it. I would advise any woman who's interested in fighting sexism that the most important thing, deeply know who you are and what you value and what's important because once you get into this sort of work, this work of, of trying to change things and sometimes pushing against people, there will be a lot of pushback and there will be criticism and you need to know very clearly within yourself what is your true north. Society doesn't need any more people who are only in it for themselves. We have enough of them. Whenever you can, choose to be kind. Choose to be the nice person. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a doormat. It makes you the kind of person that makes the world a better place. So yes, be ambitious, try to be creative, all those other things, but try to remember to be kind.